Okay, I'm talking to Kenneth Wardrop, and uh, Kenneth is the Chief Executive of Destination Edinburgh Marketing Alliance, uh, which is doing some wonderful things. So we were talking about Edinburgh intellectual capital, in both senses of the word. So tell me, Kenneth, what's your take on that? Yeah, well, Edinburgh's whole history is based on its knowledge base. Uh, we've got a real tradition in the history of our universities particularly, and it uh, goes back to the Enlightenment, of course, um, and Edinburgh's been described as the Athens of the North. So that intellectual capital drives the economy of the city, and we can see that uh, in terms of the key sectors in the city, the strength of our five higher education institutions and further education colleges. We've got 70,000 full and part-time students, 11,000 international students in the city. And we can see it in our business tourism as well, in terms of the, the niche that Edinburgh has, particularly in business tourism. And you can see it in the whole cultural ferment that is Edinburgh, and we're just about to start the six-week festival period, and, and that uh, festival is built on that creativity and that uh, intellectual um, thought and discussion and drive of the cultural offer in Edinburgh. Well, that's what it's all about, isn't it, as far as you're concerned, you were yeah. telling me yesterday, uh, that it's about the, uh, the fact that Edinburgh, in effect, invites the sort of people that it wants to come to Edinburgh to the sort of events that it wants to give. Is that a proper way of describing it? Yeah, we've done a big analysis of the market and the audience that come and the customers that come to Edinburgh's international festivals. Uh, there are 12 festivals in the city and the amazing thing about it was it was a huge homogeneity of the, the actual and profile of the demographic of the all of the festivals all had the same demographic. Slightly different age ranges within uh, some of that uh, festival audience and the different festivals. The interesting thing though is of course that when you then look at who actually lives in Edinburgh, uh, it's the same demographic and uh, who's coming to study here and the talent we're trying to attract is exactly the same demographic. So for the marketeer that's a fantastic overlay in terms of those different demographics. You know exactly, when you see them in the streets you know exactly who they are, don't you? You can, yeah, and it's uh, the very distinct to Edinburgh character and characteristic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and, and it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, Edinburgh is a high-end, high-value destination and it's a very high-quality uh, environment to live in. It's uh, scores very, very highly in attractiveness when you look at all the surveys in terms of a place to live, uh, to work, uh, to study and to visit. Now, one of the things that you do at the festivals is not only bring people to Edinburgh, yeah. but of course the festivals and the great footprint that you get around the world yeah. um, with the media yeah. are a tremendous advertisement for the city. Yeah. What benefits does that bring you? Well, that, that, that's part of my job, is to get that cross-sell from that high brand and uh, awareness and the high brand equity of Edinburgh as a visitor destination, uh, to then cross-sell that to people who would consider to come here to invest, live, work uh, or study. And it's really true place marketing, and I think that's the great experiment that's happening in Edinburgh at the moment, is this place marketing experiment, and really using our high tourism awareness, our high uh, brand uh, awareness uh, to do that cross-sell. Uh, and as I say, that huge uh, benefit of that demographic overlap is great. Uh, and it's a global city, it's the most cosmopolitan cities of, uh, Sc of, of Scotland. Uh, and uh, we're the second UK city for international arrivals. We get 1.4 million international arrivals in the city, and we've just seen that go up by 11% between 2008 and 2009. It's terrific, isn't it? Yeah, that's and great. And we're standing outside the Usher Hall. And I know that you were getting a little bit nervous because the festivals kick off to, tonight. Is yeah, really. Tonight Effectively, tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow with the start of the Jazz and Blues Festival tomorrow. And that's us into our six week period. And we're standing outside Disher Hall, which has just yeah. had £40 million pounds spent on bringing it up to international standard and fully disabled, accessible, uh, and improving the uh, visitor experience in the visitor facilities. Uh, and that £40 million pound investment's finished inside, but we're outside here <laughs> at the moment. Worry, and they're still working worry. on the streetscape. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah, but it, it is indicative of the amount of money yeah. and commitment that Edinburgh is prepared to put into the infrastructure. That's right, yeah. We're just uh, about to see next year we have the opening of the National Museum of Scotland uh, refurbishment, which is a £47 million investment, and the refurbishment of the National Portrait Gallery in Queen Street, which is another £19 million refurbishment. Uh, we're putting £13 million into replacing the, two, the tattoo stands. Uh, and that investment in the cultural infrastructure is important for both attracting visitors, but again, the whole cultural offer is a huge component in terms of what makes people want to come and live, work and study in Edinburgh. And I know that the Scots are a canny bunch, yeah. and you wouldn't be spending money um, in this sort of economic situation that we have 
unless you knew that you were going to get returns from it. Am yeah. I correct? Yes, and I think you can see that last year with the growth in the number of international visitors and Edinburgh's profile as a visitor destination is very, very high. In the UK, we're, we're regularly voted as the UK's favourite short break uh, city destination. We can see that in the amount of uh, UK visitors we still attract. London in the South East is still a primary market for Edinburgh and uh, we are very, very confident as we go forward that Edinburgh's position as one of the UK's and one of Europe's uh, top visitor attractions will uh, be sustained. Thanks very much indeed. You're welcome.